I don't usually do Friday reviews that, that often, and the fact that the rest of my schedule up until Summer Palooza 5 Steven Universe Marathon is all set up, but judging of how I haven't been keeping up with this show, mainly the fact that I prefer the original over the spinoff, if I made the choice of, of reviewing this episode after Summer Palooza, then it would have been a little too late, and by the time the marathon of Steven Universe ends, my channel is gonna go straight to Halloween material, and saving this for November won't be a good idea because it's all it's six months away. The biggest reason onto why I'm reviewing this episode, which is the last episode of season one of We Baby Bears, is this character, mainly the little bear that really caught my interest on the originality of this spinoff, and even though it's not going to catch my interest into watching the rest of the episodes that have been out recently, especially season two, it kind of sums up on the fact that the direction that this show has taken is mainly done in a way to extinct itself from being like We Bear Bears, even if that's one of the reasons why I haven't watched another episode from this, but it made me understand onto how the creativity from this final episode can showcase what season 2 is gonna be. In the beginning of the episode, after the introduction of a new character, the Bears are trying to run away from Madame and her daughter for the many attempts they tried to capture Panda, which led to them teleporting to a different location. They question on the origins of the box, and then the new character gets launched from her old home and crash to the Bears, which it's revealed that she has a star on herself, and this gave the Bears an idea for what they can figure out the origins of the box. Not to mention that Madame and, and Madine are trying everything to find Panda, only to see the fourth Bear catching Madine's interest so much than Panda. And for how I see this episode's execution involving Dippy herself, it's no surprise that she's probably going to return in a future episode in this spinoff. Granted, it could happen in the finale of this show, mainly in season 2, or maybe midway into season 2, depending on what happens, but by the looks of it, this is basically the exclusive character towards the spinoff. This episode, from beginning to end, made me see a lot more of how the main characters are developed in a different scenario. Even though that the main priority is to save Dippy and her mother when it comes to the situation that her mother is in when Cassie is taking full control of Dippy's old home. Cassie, who is the main antagonist, not to mention the sister of Dippy's mother, is for what she is. In all honesty, the characters that I've experienced from season one after doing that big project two years ago, which I can't believe it's almost two years ago, this character really made me feel like that this show's problems involving creating new characters is mainly the fact that they need to give them uh, a stereotype or a gimmick. Which, you know, honestly, I've been giving the characters way too much credit two years ago, but then again, it was me comparing it to Camp Coral. So, looking at this character on its own, I really feel like that she would impact a little bit more if we actually get to see more of her development, but, consider but considering that this spin-off isn't meant to be taken seriously, it's becoming obvious that the main characters are going to beat the main antagonists. It may apply to other shows, but since that the direction of those shows were done a little bit more maturely, I can't say for a fact that the Bears will have a disadvantage, because 
Whenever the climax comes into play, when it comes to Madame and Madine interfering due to Panda again getting something from the internet, which gained the attention from the antagonists, well, mainly the other antagonists, we get a Wobo versus Magic Bot battle involving Cassie and Grizz taking control of Madame's machines. This really feels really unique when it comes to the designs of these two things, but every time that I consider of Dippy being a factor when it comes to her being harmed due to Cassie trying to get Dippy in order to take control of her home, mainly Dippy's home, then I'm pretty sure that the origins of the box can literally be a lot more devastating if she actually turns turns it into something really severe. Even though that the climax is somewhat interesting in the fact that Madame and Medine are willing to help out Grizz, just by seeing Grizz throwing them out the window, or well, well, nearly through the window glass, it really feels like that having a scene involving these characters together would have been too predictable, and judging of how this spin-off, like I said earlier, isn't meant to be taken seriously. What happens in Season 2 when it comes to the multiple 22-minute episodes is mainly direction on its own in comparison to We Bear Bears. This sums up a lot that this show has changed ever since I last looked at it two years ago, and after doing my review of the Halloween episode, which is a crossover of Summer Camp Island, it really lives up its gimmick of being a spin-off way more than Camp Coral. Even if it isn't a good thing or a bad thing in my point of view, that's the credibility I'm willing to give this spin-off, because once Dippy screams in order to have her mother set free, she gives Kelsey a piece of her mind while also turning her old so that she wouldn't have a social following, which Cassie also mentioned the koala that she surpassed, which is a reference to Nam Nam from We Bear Bears. And Dippy's mother is the reason onto why the bears got the trans the magical box in the first place. Especially, she is mostly responsible for the shooting stars that Cassie ate them while she was in control, and she's willing to give the Bells the new, the magical box being reformed after it was destroyed, and they have the option to go to which place they want to go to after they drop the offer of staying with Ho and Dippy, which would have been the option to have. Dippy's home, their own home, but judging of how it centers around the eventuals that they go through, especially when it came to the original, Season 2 is probably going to be a lot more friendship driven, judging of how we get returning characters after looking through the descriptions of the Season 2 episodes. Though the only sad thing about this whole thing is that when Quick of the Creek comes to an end and this show has its last remaining episodes, if it's not going to be renewed for a third season, then it really gave me the idea that this is the only original Cartoon Network product, which is a spin-off which people have been discussing, and if Trick Moon was greenlit, greenlit then it would have been a saving grace, but that's honestly disrespectful towards the spinoff because even if Trick Moon dissolves a show of its own, it's not like that this is a bad option that I've that I've mentioned in my video of this in Camp Cola nearly two years ago. The thing is, is that looking at these episodes and for how this episode is almost a year old, and it's on hiatus due to the situation that Cartoon Network is in. Either Cartoon Network is moving forward when it comes to the new environment, or this is the actual state that Cartoon Network is in 
with Teen Titans Go being a Warner Brothers property is getting the SpongeBob attention, which is way too difficult to overlook, judging of how Nickelodeon has been airing SpongeBob nonstop. Not to say that this show is something that people would ignore on if they didn't watch We Bear Bears before, but judging the circumstances right now, this really feels like the loneliest show when it comes to Cartoon Network products, which is a shame, because I don't think that they're going to make an original show similar to Infinity Train, Victor and Valentino, or even Quick of the Creek anytime soon. This decade really isn't Cartoon Network's decade in comparison to the last decade. But aside from that, I still found this episode decent enough to sit through once. Like, if you're a fan of We Bear Bears and you're mostly curious on the spin-off, watch the series if you have the chance, mainly the first season, and once you get into this episode, you may get something out of it, since I got something from one of the new characters, Dippy, that caught my interest. But at the same time, that's depending on your point of view. When it comes to Dippy herself, there's a slight chance I might use her for my Canada Weeper Bell story, even if it may eliminate her powers on being a star bear from a mother who takes control of the stars, but it, I'm still into one of the earlier chapters by the time of this recording, and I still don't know where the direction of the story is going to be taken. Just to point this out in case if anyone's curious. Truthfully, the only thing that I'm looking forward to when it comes to this show is a possible Christmas episode since it skipped December's 2022 and 2023 and I would like to see the direction that they're going to be taking in comparison to the original episode's Christmas movies, but then again, it's still a possibility that could happen or could not. But then again, that's just that's just basically me thinking of what the spin-off can do, since that it did a crossover involving Summer Camp Island in its Halloween episode. With that being said, I am going to be reviewing another We Bear Bells episode on Mother's Day, which I'm going to keep anonymous. And as for this show, there's a chance I might watch episodes from it, but again, it's not my main priority at the moment. But I will review the Christmas episode if it does happen. I'm giving this episode a 7 out of 10.